The province of New Jersey was one of the middle colonies of colonial America and became New Jersey, a state of United States in 1783. The province had originally been settled by Europeans as part of New Netherland, but came under English rule after the surrender of Fort Amsterdam in 1664, becoming a proprietary colony. The English then renamed the province after the Isle of Jersey in the English Channel. The Dutch Republic reasserted control for a brief period in 1673–1674. After that it consisted of two political divisions, East Jersey and West Jersey, until they were united as a royal colony in 1702. The original boundaries of the province were slightly larger than the current state, extending into a part of the present state of New York, until the border was finalized in 1773. Background. The province of New Jersey was originally settled in the 1610s as part of the colony of New Netherland. The surrender of Fort Amsterdam in September 1664 gave control over the entire Mid-Atlantic region to the English as part the Second Anglo-Dutch War. The English justified the seizure by claiming that John Cabot c. 1450 c. 1508, an Italian under the sponsorship of the English King Henry VII, had been the first to discover the place, though it was probably to assert control over the profitable North Atlantic trade. Director General of New Netherland, Peter Stuyvesant, unable to rouse a military defence relinquished control of the colony and was able in the Articles of Transfer to secure guarantees for property rights, laws of inheritance, and freedom of religion. After the surrender Richard Nichols took the position as Deputy Governor of New Amsterdam and the rest of New Netherland, including those settlements on the west side of the North River, Hudson River known as Bergen, and those along the Delaware River that had been New Sweden. <laughs> Proprietary government See also, Lords Proprietor 1665 and Governors under the Proprietors 1665 In March 1664, King Charles II granted his brother, James, the Duke of York, a royal colony that covered New Netherlands and present-day Maine. This charter also included parts of present-day Massachusetts, which conflicted with that colony's charter. The charter allowed James traditional propriety rights and imposed few restrictions upon his powers. In general terms, the charter was equivalent to a conveyance of land conferring on him the right of possession, control, and government, subject only to the limitation that the government must be consistent with the laws of England. The Duke of York never visited his colony and exercised little direct control of it. He elected to administer his government through governors, councils, and other officers appointed by himself. No provision was made for an elected assembly. Later in 1664, the Duke of York gave the part of his new possessions between the Hudson River and the Delaware River to Sir George Carteret in exchange for settlement of a debt. The territory was named after the island of Jersey, Carteret's ancestral home. The other section of New Jersey was sold to Lord Berkeley of Stratton, who was a close friend of the Duke. As a result, Carteret and Berkeley became the two English lords proprietors of New Jersey. The two proprietors of New Jersey attempted to attract more settlers to move to the province by granting sections of lands to settlers and by passing the Concession and Agreement, a 1665 document that granted religious freedom to all inhabitants of New Jersey. Under the British government, there was no such religious freedom as the Church of England was the state church. In return for the land, the settlers were supposed to pay annual fees known as quit rents. In 1665, Philip Carteret became the first governor of New Jersey, appointed by the two proprietors. He selected Elizabeth as the capital of New Jersey. Immediately, Carteret issued several additional grants of land to landowners. Towns were started and charters granted to Bergen 1668, Woodbridge 1669, Piscataway 1666, Shrewsbury, Middletown 1693, and Newark 1666. The idea of quitrents became increasingly difficult because many of the settlers refused to pay them. Most of them claimed that they owed nothing to the proprietors because they received land from Richard Nichols, governor of New York. This forced Berkeley to sell West Jersey to John Fenwick and Edward Billing, two English Quakers. Many more Quakers made their homes in New Jersey, seeking religious freedom from English Church of England rule. Meanwhile, conflicts began rising in New Jersey. 
Edmund Andros, governor of New York, attempted to gain authority over East Jersey after the death of proprietor George Carteret in 1680. However, he was unable to remove the position of governorship from Governor Philip Carteret and subsequently moved to attack him and brought him to trial in New York. Carteret was later acquitted. In addition, quarrels occurred in between Eastern and Western New Jerseyans, between Native Americans and New Jerseyans and between different religious groups. In the largest of these squabbles, the New York-New Jersey Line wore some 210,000 acres .8 square kilometers of land were at stake between New York and New Jersey. The conflict was eventually settled by a royal commission in 1769. <laughs> East Jersey and West Jersey See also, Governors of East Jersey 1674 and Governors of West Jersey 1680 from 1674 to 1702, the province of New Jersey was divided into East Jersey and West Jersey, each with its own governor. Each had its own constitution, the West Jersey Constitution 1681 and the East Jersey Constitution 1683. The exact border between West and East Jersey was often disputed. The border between the two sides reached the Atlantic Ocean to the north of present-day Atlantic City. The border line was created by George Keith and can still be seen in the county boundaries between Burlington and Ocean Counties, and between Hunterdon and Somerset Counties. The Keith Line runs NNW from the southern part of Little Egg Harbor Township, passing just north of Tuckerton, and reaching upward to a point on the Delaware River which is just north of the Delaware Water Gap. Later, the 1676 Quintapartite deed helped to lessen the disputes. More accurate surveys and maps were made to resolve property disputes. This resulted in the Thornton Line, drawn around 1696, and the Lawrence Line, drawn around 1743, which was adopted as the final line for legal purposes. <laughs> Dominion of New England The Dominion of New England was a short-lived administrative union. On May 7, 1688, the province of New York, the province of East Jersey, and the province of West Jersey were added to the Dominion. The capital was located in Boston but, due to its size, New York and the Jerseys were run by the lieutenant governor from New York City. After news of the overthrow of James II by William of Orange in the Glorious Revolution of 1688 reached Boston, the colonists rose up in rebellion, and the Dominion was dissolved in 1689. <laughs> Royal Colony On April 17, 1702, under the rule of Queen Anne, the two sections of the proprietary colony were united and New Jersey became a royal colony. Edward Hyde, Lord Cornbury, became the first governor of the colony as a royal colony. However, he was an ineffective and corrupt ruler, taking bribes and speculating on land. In 1708, Lord Cornbury was recalled to England. New Jersey was then again ruled by the governors of New York, but this infuriated the settlers of New Jersey, accusing those governors of favoritism to New York. Judge Lewis Morris led the case for a separate governor, and was appointed governor by King George II in 1738. <laughs> New York–New Jersey Line War Provincial Congress First state constitution New Jersey's first state constitution was adopted on July 2, 1776. The American Revolutionary War was underway and General George Washington recently had been defeated in New York, putting the state in danger of invasion. The 1776 New Jersey state constitution was drafted in five days and ratified within the next two days to establish a temporary government, thereby preventing New Jersey from collapsing and descending into anarchy. Among other provisions, it granted unmarried women and blacks who met property requirements the right to vote. Judiciary The Supreme Court was established in 1704, to sit alternately at Perth Amboy and Burlington, consisting of a Chief Justice, a second judge and several associate judges. Chief Justices See also 
Elizabethtown Tract Horseneck Tract English Neighborhood Colonial Government in the Thirteen Colonies Council and Assembly Colonial History of New Jersey List of Colonial Governors of New Jersey Attorney General of New Jersey Jersey, Channel Islands Robert Treat New York New Jersey Line War List of the oldest buildings in New Jersey Topic. References Topic. External links Colonial Charters, Grants and Related Documents at New Jersey. The Avalon Project, Documents in Law, History and Diplomacy. Lillian Goldman Law Library Yale Law School. Retrieved 14 March 2010. This website has links to the following documents. 1664 The Duke of York's release to John Ford Berkeley, and Sir George Carteret, 24 June. 1664 The concession and agreement of the Lords Proprietors of the Province of New Caesarea, or New Jersey, to and with all and every the adventurers and all such as shall settle or plant there. 1672 A declaration of the true intent and meaning of us the Lords Proprietors, an explanation of their concessions made to the adventurers and planters of New Caesarea or New Jersey. 1674 His Royal Highness's Grant to the Lords Proprietors, Sir George Carteret, 29 July 1676 The Charter or Fundamental Laws, of West New Jersey, agreed upon 1676 Quintapartite Deed of Revision, between E. and W. Jersey, July 1 1680 Duke of York's Second Grant to William Penn, Gon Lowry, Nicholas Lucas, John Eldridge, Edmund Warner, and Edward Billing, for the soil and government of West New Jersey August 6 1681 Province of West New Jersey, in America, the 25th of the ninth month called November 1682 Duke of York's Confirmation to the 24 Proprietors, the 14th of March 1683 The Fundamental Constitutions for the Province of East New Jersey in America 1683 The King's Letter Recognizing the Proprietor's Right to the Soil and Government 1702 Surrender from the Proprietors of East and West New Jersey, of their pretended right of government to Her Majesty 1709 The Queen's Acceptance of the Surrender of Government, April 17 1712 – Charles II's grant of New England to the Duke of York, 1676 – Exemplified by Queen Anne 1776 – Constitution of New Jersey Topic. Further reading Cunningham, John T. Colonial New Jersey 1971-160 pp Doyle, John Andrew English Colonies in America, Volume 4 The Middle Colonies 1907, online ch 7-8 McCormick, Richard P. New Jersey from Colony to State, 1609-1789-1964-191 pp Pomfret, John Edwin. Colonial New Jersey, A History 1973, The Standard Modern History.